we're at the Opasco Summer Convention. We're very privileged to have uh, John Rose, who's the president of Opasco, with us. Uh, John, um, one of the uh, segments we had on VOD TV and the Hotel Channel here was um, about uh, uh, Intel and their vision. And they said, you know, today the bare minimum is 10 megabits to, you know, really create a connected home smart TV experience. And I know you have some opinions on this, so I'd like to hear them. Well, you know, the FCC has decided it's 100 megabit to 100 million people. And, you know, a standard now 4 megabit in, uh, to the as a minimum standard to the other 30 million by 2020. So that's 10 years from now. So if you take 100 meg divided by 4 meg and do a ratio of say 1.5, that low amount we have today, mm -hmm. that relegates, a, that comes up with 60K or dollar. So in my opinion, if we have 100 meg for uh, urban areas and 4 meg but rural areas 10 years from now, what you're effectively telling rural areas, we're going to give you a dial up. Yeah. Uh, that's and, and that's a very significant statement. It comes up to 60K, or, which is real close to $56. So, I mean, the, ra the 25 to 1 ratio is so bad that it relegates rural areas to dial up. That's interesting, dial up of the 2020 period. That's right. That's right. 10 years down the I mean, 4 megabit is bad enough today. It really doesn't work today. It particularly doesn't work. To, you know, and the, and the FCC's broadband plan, they laid a lot of good goals and what the nation should do. Four megabit doesn't accomplish those goals today. So what do you think is going to happen in 2020? Yeah, the last no, time... 20, yeah, 2020. Tw and, you know, the last time Opasco was here in Seattle, it was 15 years ago, it was before deregulation. Um, and it was even before DSL. I mean, we were still talking, I think, about 28 kilobits modems then. And, and now you can't even imagine what that would be like. That's right. That, what, what were, we were doing... Uh, ISDN, remember that was yeah. 56 or something like that. That was that was talked about significantly 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this idea of 10 years. I mean, just think what 10 years is. I mean, so 10 years is pre 9/11. Yeah. So I mean, 10 years is a long time in the new digital world, and to say we're going to do four megabits 10 years from now, that's really not a vision. It's not forward-looking. It's really not a plan. And that was one of the things that I think we've heard. Um, you know, this plan, it sounds like it's more of a, um, of a, 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 a not a blueprint, but quite kind of a, pre, a preliminary plan uh, is what we heard this morning. I, I, I don't even think it's that. I think uh, this morning at the uh, broadband panel, they talked about $300 billion. I think that number is way high. I think people like Corning Glass and others, they're going to come up with something, I'm assuming, less than a third of that less than a third of that. Well, and the other thing too is you have to factor in that a lot of these homes are already served by copper of some sort, I would imagine. So, you know, if you do overlashing technology and so forth, that would reduce the cost significantly. I, I think so too. I, I just think, I, I still don't know where the 300 came from and uh, we haven't been able to look at it. And that, that's not the only problem with some of their studies. I mean, the other studies uh, between wireless and wireline you know, they, in the telephone world, we're used to doing busy hour things, and we had to really plug into that stuff. And we have a small percentage of uh, a lot of our people that use a, a large uh, percent of the capacity. Somehow, in some of those F FCC studies, they dropped out that percentage of uh, like the 10% of the largest cups. Customers that use like 60 some percent of the network, somehow that didn't get in. So I think that really skewed the results away from a landline fiber type thing or even DSL type thing. Yeah, because the oversubscription, if you're, all you're relying on is an oversubscribed service, you suddenly get a busy tile tone, right? Yeah, not only that, a shared service, uh, if you have a shared service, which wireless is, mm -hmm. uh, cable modems right now are shared service. If you have a shared service, the advertised speeds and the obtained speeds is a very big difference. For DSL and fiber, Generally, uh, the speeds are pretty advertised and the actual speeds are pretty close. The middle mile can do some of the things that and all kinds of other things. But for a shared service like wireless, it's a huge difference between you know, your advertised speeds and your attained speeds, particularly in a, in a busy hour. Well, and the other thing, too, is the, um, I, I heard from one independent telco the importance of, that they play in just interconnecting these existing wireless sites. Without them, there is no wireless. That's right. You've got to have the backhaul. You've got to have the middle of the mile. I mean, wireless and wireline are very much connected networks. You need both of them, and you need a different standard. 
you know, you should have a wireline standard, a wireless standard, and that, you know, and I think rural areas needs both. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and if there's one kind of over, or overarching theme, it's the importance of kind of unifying, but also getting the message back to Washington, back to the FCC, back to Congress, and so forth about what's going on. Exactly right. If we were willing to step up as a country to the interstate highway system in the 50s, shouldn't we be willing to step up to wire this country a fiber? Is wiring fiber any less important than building the interstate highway system? You know, after World War II, we, we passed the GI Bill, which sent a, a whole lot of people to college. It turned out to be a really productive thing. Are we going to backslide on this stuff as a company? If, as a country? If so, shame on us. Well, John, it remain, you know, I guess we'll see in six months okay. what progress has been made, but I appreciate, as always, your time and uh, appreciate being here at the show. Well, thank you. We enjoy having you. Thanks. You know. See you later. Okay.